All right, so let's now look at another problem where we can apply integration by parts technique into solve, solving a, an indefinite integral problem. And this problem is another example in addition to those examples being delivered in my uh, general main lecture about the, the integration by parts. And this example uh, has its own specialty as well, where I will uh, mention that throughout the problem as we progress or the, somewhere at the end of the problem before we finish. Okay, and so unlike many other example, allow me to word this problem as following. So here instead of a Instead of those examples that you have seen from me before where I gave those examples where we directly evaluate or the instruction was to directly evaluate an, an, an integral, an indefinite integral, then here we are going to have an example as following. And it's also a, at this point in your learning, it's also a good place here to start learning some of, of this uh, technique here and, and you will be finding out. So I want to prove, let's look at how we can prove and let's prove the following. So I want to prove that the indefinite integral of the following function, sine to the n of x, or sine of x to the n, okay, dx, of course, equals to. So we want to prove that this integral, so it's sine to the n of x, or the whole sine of x being raised to the, the n power. That's the we equal to minus 1 over n times a sine of, I mean sine to the n minus 1 of x times cosine of x, okay, and we are going to add n minus 1 over n. Allow me to rewrite this because I'm running a little short at space here. minus 1 over n sine to the n minus 1 of x times cosine of x. So we are going to add n minus 1 over n with the following integral sine to the n minus 1 of x dx. And indeed, I need to make a correction. It's actually an, an n minus two here. Okay, and so we don't have to worry about the plus c or whatsoever, but the problem now wants us to prove, so we want to prove that that we're having an equality as being indicated here. So what's the equality saying? The equality here or this equation is saying that the left hand side will equal to this expression on the right hand side. Okay, and so this will be a, a, it could be, this problem could be a good time to, for, 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 I mean, a, a good place for any of my students to start learning some basic proofs, uh, you know, and especially the kind of proof where we want to prove a, an equality, how, you know, how an, an equality can always hold true regardless of which uh, value of our variable x here, our main variable x in this. And so, the very, so to get started, you know, the very standard technique in proving a problem, in proving any equality, not only this equality, any other equality, you might have seen some, uh, some uh, trick identity that you have proven, uh, that you've learned how to prove back in your uh, trigonometry courses and all that. So the, the main idea and the biggest idea in proving any equality here is that we're going to start out by picking one side. We're going to start out by picking one side and then uh, work our way out to, to find out to show how it will also equal to the other side. Or in other words, yes, the left hand side and the right hand side here are supposedly equal, these two expressions, regardless of what whatever the, the expression for x is, but we want to find those bridges because right now it's so unclear how the left this left hand side can be made equal with the right hand side. So we will be so to prove this we need to bring out the other bridges, the hidden bridges so that it shows clearly, step by step, how we can make from this left hand side equal to the right hand side. Or you can, someone can think from the other way around. We, we want to find out those bridges, so how we can make the right hand side here equal to the left hand side. Okay? And that's on standard how we prove a, a, uh, 
an, 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 an equality in general, okay, in mathematics. Okay, so here we go. Let's uh, try to get, get started on that. So for this problem, I will need a lot of board space. So allow me to erase uh, the result. I mean, the, uh, erase this ultimate uh, goal that we're trying to prove here. But the plan now is that in my experience, let me share with you, and, and you, you are more than welcome to explore your own creativity as well, but in my experience, uh, that in this video, I am going to show you that uh, I am going to start out with the left-hand side, and I want to show how this left-hand side, because uh, in the end, as we're looking at this left-hand side, it is simply just an integral problem. It's an indefinite integral problem. So we just want to apply all of our understanding in integral problems in, in, in integration techniques so that we can find our ways or our way, only one way, to eventually arrive at some expression that equals exactly this expression on the right hand side of this equality. And that's the whole point of this. And so, and as I said, you know, after reviewing this video, you are more than welcome to, to uh, explore your own creativity to see how you can go from the right hand side, or, I mean as a completely different method right here, other than the method I show here in this video. But uh, you can also try to go from the right hand side and make your way to make it equal to the left hand side, which I find very challenging. But uh, you know, who knows, there are the brilliant students out there, the, the students with brilliant mind that can come up with you know, super creative uh, solutions for that. So allow me to go from the left hand side. Okay, and so now I am going to erase and you can Feel free to pause me to take note completely with what our goal is. We want to, to know how the left-hand side can equal with this lengthy, the, the right-hand side expression. Okay? And so now allow me to erase the right-hand side because that's our goal. But see, so now ignoring the fact that we are trying to prove, and, and now just now after erasing this right-hand side, we really are left behind with simply a, an indefinite integral problem. So think about it. We have learned enough technique at this point. You've learned, and specifically, I said this problem in the beginning of this video lesson. I said that we are going to use integration by parts technique to handle this integral. Because in the end, as I have already erased that right-hand side, we are left behind. We, we have here remaining with a completely a, an integral problem, an indefinite integral problem. So let's see how our, the integration by parts can help us right here. Okay? So at start, here's how I see it. And I introduced, I brought in the Liotte guideline throughout my general lecture about uh, the integration by parts. But I, keep, I kept saying through, throughout, my inter, inter, throughout my lecture there that there are exceptions to the Liotte guideline. So the, the Liotte guideline is good, but, but, and of course it's good for those problems where we have to apply the integration by parts. However, however there are still exceptions out there. And this problem is indeed uh, one of those problems. And so this is where I, I mentioned the, the first specialty of, of this problem right here. If, if we're looking at this problem simply as an integration problem, as an indefinite integral problem, then the, 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 the first specialty that you're seeing in this problem is that we, we have the, the Liotte guideline is not useful for this problem. Okay? And so we are not going to use that. But this is what I do. As first step, this is the algebra. At first step, I am going to see this problem as sine of n, I mean sine to the n minus 1 of x, okay, times sine of x. So it's just a simple algebra. Some, some n power, I split, I split it out down to some, the n minus n minus 1 on the sine of x function and multiply with an extra sine of x. Okay, so this is uh, algebra, it's an algebraic understanding that we've been having. And so now I see what we have here now all of a sudden we, I, I have here is an expression where we have one function sine to the n minus 1 of x times sine of x and times dx. And so now we are going to pick a, a choice. So the choice here is going to be allow me to actually introduce the choice here because like I said, the Liotte scheme is, is not going to be useful. So it's hard for us here and it's hard for viewers at the first time to predict. So I am going to say that I am going to pick my U choice to be sine to the n minus 1 of x. Okay, so that's what I picked for the U choice actually. 
And then so now, just like at this point, things will go back to the way how I have been explaining in, since my uh, general lecture. And, and so once we have made our U choice, once we have decided which function we are going to substitute for U, then everything else, everything else in this entire expression aside from the sign, aside from our U choice here, everything else including the D expression here will be regarded as the, the DV expression. So now I am going to call this. My dv here is going to be sine of x multiplied with the differential dx right there. OK. And so now from this point, we're going to go ahead and take parts for each of these. So if, if, we, if we're substituting u for sine to the n minus 1 of x, then of course du dx, the derivative of the function u in terms of x, is going to be, well, the power rule to, by, for taking the derivative says we can multiply the power down, so n minus 1, okay, times uh, sine of uh, n minus 2. That's the derivative of the outer function. Let me move this vertical bar separator of mine a little bit out. And then the chain rule says we need to multiply, and at, at this point, uh, if, if anyone here feeling, watching, viewing this video feeling surprised about what I mean by inside and outside, please find my other video on, on uh, the explanation about the chain rule that, uh, that were delivered for, for students who are taking differential calculus. Okay? But so now, in this, the inside function is the sine function. So taking the derivative of sine gives me cosine of x. Okay? So that's the derivative of uh, u as a function of uh, as a function sine to the n minus 1 of x. So du dx here is all that expression. And then just like how I have been doing it in my general lecture with a, a couple examples delivered there, then at this point I am seeing this notation here not only as a frac, I mean not only as a symbol for derivative, but it's, it's also a fraction meaning it's a differential du over the dx. So we can multiply the differential dx over to both sides, so consequently I'm ending up with du equal n minus 1 times a sine to the n minus 2 of x, okay, times a cosine of x dx, okay. All right, and so now that's about everything we can do on the left-hand side column here. And now for dv, once we have chosen it, I mean after we've chosen u right here, then everything else is supposedly dv. So once we have chosen dv right here, then v will be found by simply taking the indefinite integral on this simple function, which anyone viewing this video should be having a, a clear, quick answer for that. So the answer for this sine of x here, I mean the integration for sine of x is going to be, so my v will be minus cosine of x. And again, just like how I have explained so many times in my general lecture, here in this small integral problem, in this small in indefinite integral problem where it is only one step of a bigger problem, we don't need to do the plus c here. It is uh, completely legal to allow skipping the, the plus c here. All right, so we got u, and consequently we ended up with du expression. And from having u, we had dv, and then consequently we found out what our v is. So it's now time to put the pieces together according to the, the integration by parts formula. So allow me to navigate over to my other board right here. And again, the integration by parts formula says uh, once you can ex re-express your integral as a u dv, the integral of a u times dv, then you can proceed with this integral by just finding what u is separately, and then multiply with v, and then subtract an extra integral produced by v du. So this is the main formula and the only essential formula for, for integration by parts technique. All right, so now u in our problem here. And so again, now allow me to rewrite this. So the starting integral at first, okay, sine to the n of x dx equals to, and so now we see this, or maybe let me also rewrite the other one. So sine to the n minus 1 of x times uh, sine of x dx. So this is dv, this is u. So now in the next step, according to the 
integration by parts formula. This is what I'm doing. Now, usually I'm writing equal signs, trying to align up here, but since I'm so short of space, allow me to write that a little bit, uh, the, the, you know, out of or organized, uh, out of uh, being organized like that. So, U is uh, all right. So there's there's our U, and then DV is here. Okay, but V is also here. So U times V is essentially, I'm going to put the minus sign here, okay? And then here I'm having sine to the N minus 1 of X times cosine of X, okay? And maybe let me write that a little closer because I, because I know there will be a lot of writing waiting ahead for me. Okay, so again, sine, of, sine to the N minus 1 of X times cosine of x. That uh, u times dv. So u times, uh, I mean u times v here. Okay? And then I need to subtract. And according to this formula for integration by parts, I am going to have, uh, and so now it's v du. So v was minus cosine of x, and du was the n minus 1 times sine to the n minus 2 of x times cosine of x dx. All right. And so the next thing I want to see here is, so th see this minus sign and that minus sign here is going to cancel out and we can also bring that n minus 1 here because again I have explained this back in, in that first lecture, in that lecture, earlier lecture where I was talking about uh, the meaning of the d expression right here, so d here is a dx. So only so that means in the entire expression here, those variables being the x, those are the main variable. But anything else, any other letters outside or aside from the main variable here, that those are being regarded as coefficient. So coefficient, we can always bring them in, in front. And so in this way, in my next step, allow me to write things as following. So how about, uh, let me cheat around a little bit. I'm going to quickly erase this and, and modify it. Okay, so this integral truly becomes a, uh, in the next step, supposedly. So it's plus n minus 1, okay? And then the integral of uh, sine of m to the n minus 2 of x times uh, cosine squared of x, and then dx. And that's our integral at this point, because we in the previous step, we had two cosine factors. Okay, and then now, the, so in the next step, I wrote them at, uh, I wrote all of those as a cosine square. Okay, this, this sine of n minus 2 is still here. Okay, and then you can notice a little further, so the, the, the n minus 1, I brought it in front, just like how I explained further. And then the negative sine, to, and the, together with this negative sine, uh, consequently gave us this plus sine. Okay, so now we are ready for the next step. So, recall again, a, a, an important trick identity right here. Cosine square, cosine squared of x, we're always equals to 1 minus sine squared of x. Anyone who, are, who is ready to view this video as a formal calculus student must have seen this. Okay, so allow me not to explain, uh, to allow me to not explain uh, where this came from. I mean, the, there are tons of video resources over the web that explains what this is. Okay, so cosine squared of x equals 1 minus sine squared. And I am going to take that 1 minus sine squared and subtract that right in, I mean, and, and substitute that right at the role of this cosine squared right here. So my next step becomes, so in my next step, I have the following. So the first term before the integral term remains the same, sine to the n minus 1 of x times cosine of x. Okay, plus, and then I have one, n minus 1 still here. And then the integral, we, we're just doing a little algebra with this cosine square. So it's sine to the n minus 2 of x, and then times uh, 1 minus cosine square, I mean sine square. Sine square of x dx. Okay? And so, and so now, for 
anyone viewing this video, let's turn your focus into this work, this integral work. And we can also, at this point, we can temporarily ignore this coefficient m minus 1. But how I see this? Well, we got two terms here. So I can multiply or distribute this and this sign of uh, sine to the n minus 2 of x to both terms right there. OK? All right, so that means uh, in my next step, and again, I have to apologize that since I have a very narrow space right here, so a lot of things that I wrote, and then I have to quickly erase that. So the first term here remains the same. Sine, negative sine to n minus 1 of x times cosine of x plus, and now I have n minus 1, okay. and then the integral. And now in here, I'm going to turn that into a, some, something with two terms. So sine to the n minus so sine to the n minus 2 times of x times 1 is going to remain the same. Sine to the n minus 2 of x. OK. And then I'm going to subtract. And then now it is going to be, and so sine to the n minus 2, but multiply with sine squared. It is going to give us sine to the n of x. And then these two terms now is one function. That's multiplied with the dx expression. OK, and so at this point right here, now I'm really out of space here on this board. I will, I have to, I'll have to get back and continue my steps here on the, the earlier part of the board. But now I have left this here long enough. Allow me to erase that out. And then as the, the original main problem, allow me to keep that here so that we can so that I can reference back later, OK? And so to continue with my previous step, so here's how the, my next step is going to go into look like. Uh, minus sine to the n minus 1 of x times cosine of x plus. And so now, one more time, I am going to swing back to the, the earlier board here. So this is two terms. It's two terms. So the rule for indefinite integral that we have seen earlier allows us to take the indefinite integral or the antiderivative term by term. So in other words, we can split this into two separate integrals, two separate indefinite integrals. Okay, but, but they both have to have that common factor being the coefficient n minus one right here. Okay, and so that means now in my next other board, in my uh, empty board here, this part of the empty board, I'm going to have n minus 1 in, in parentheses as a coefficient multiply with sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. That's one term. Okay? And due to the subtraction sign that we have had before in our previous step, now I'm going to have another n minus 1 here. Okay? Multiply with the integral sine to the n of x dx. Okay? Sine of n, sine to the n of x dx. Well, it has an n minus one here, but it's sine to the n of x. Does that look familiar? And I had a reason why I still retain this original problem here. Okay, so somewhere here and there, the, among the, all of my examples, uh, including the additional examples aside from the main channel lecture, I did bring in uh, the, the, a, a different examples where I can show you can uh, that that. You know, sometimes even doing calculus work, but you can apply the following fabulous uh, algebra trick right here. The whole point is, you see, we've made it this way in our journey, but all of this here is supposed to equal this beginning integral. I mean, believe it or not, because that's that's how it was. We started out. Uh, this was our integral, our integral, and then we algebraically broken that down, broke that down to two separate functions for a purpose. And then we did our integration, our biparts thingy. And then once we've had that biparts thing, then we apply the integration biparts formula. And then so everything here is just keep equal. So any step that we're at equal to the previous step and equals to the, 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 the even further previous step and eventually equal to that original problem. So my point now is that at this point, we can legally say, at this point, I can legally say, now, allow me to do this. 
allow me to do this. And I have to write it small. This integral sine to the n of x dx will equal to all of this here. And the reason I have to write it small is so that I can have enough space. So it equals minus, minus sine to the n minus 1 of x cosine of x plus 1 integral n minus 1 times uh, sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. And then that subtraction sign, and now let me erase this step right here. Okay, and subtract n minus 1. So there is that equality right here that I want to, everyone to focus to or pay your attention to. Let me even write it red ink. Okay, because really, even though we're at this step, we found this step, but all of this here, okay, is supposed to equal to that original problem. Okay, and so that trick that I briefly mentioned, the, 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 that fabulous algebra trick that I mentioned just earlier, and I, I also said that I, I introduced that in other examples as an addition, uh, additional example aside from the, those being delivered in the general lecture, is that we can add this as an expression, we can add this expression to the other side. Now, simply just see this. Now, if we just simply see this as an equality, as an equation, then we can add this expression to the other side. Okay, what's the advantage of that? Because think about the far plane right here. They are like terms on the two opposite sides right there of an equation, of, a, of an equality. Okay, and so now, since, but since they have, uh, well, they have slightly different uh, Coefficient, that's why I said there are like terms. They are like terms in the sense that they're all the same integral here. But this one here is at coefficient n minus 1 with a negative sign. Okay, and, and that's the reason why now I can add this to the other side. And so adding this to the other side, all right. So now if we, this is the sign for that, that straight through cross sign, crossover sign, so that we can indicate we can, we can start adding side by side here. So I am adding. I'm adding, as a matter of fact, I am adding the entire n minus 1 integral of sine to the n of x dx to the left. And I'm also adding the entire n minus 1 multiplied with the, the integral of sine to the n of x dx from both sides, from to both sides of our current equation. Okay, and so doing that, here's the here's the beauty of algebra coming is coming in right here. The adding and the subtraction here cancels out. Okay, and then here on the left hand side, if we're adding like terms, then they're going to come. These like terms are going to be combined. Okay, and so in that way, and so now in my next step, now I have enough space to write the following. In the next step, really, I lead to having. So n plus 1, but plus 1 more of the same expression. See, see the sine, see the integral of sine to the n of x as, as one expression. So n minus 1 times of that expression plus 1 more times of that expression. We're ending up with just n times the integral of sine to the n of x dx. And all that there is equal to, and actually, now I just realized I wrote this. Uh, the horizontal line a little too early. It's supposedly down here, okay? And so now all of that there equals to the remaining part of the right-hand side here after canceling away this term that being crossed out. So now I'm looking at minus sine to the n minus 1 of x times cosine of x plus n minus 1 times the integral of sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. Okay, so I have to come to this far. Have a really good note of this. Pause the video if you have to and take a good note of this highlight key step right here. Because now I am going to write in my next step, I'm going to need to, the, the next board and I'll have to erase that. But, but uh, it's, it's hard to keep moving back and forth here. So have a good close look at this. Okay, so now. 
in my next step. So now taking it further from that previous step, then the previous step is here. So n times of that integral, and we already came to say to say that it equals to minus sine of sine to the n minus one of x times cosine of x, and then plus n minus one as a coefficient multiplied with the integral sine to the n minus two of x dx. Okay, and so. So now we are ready to solve for this. I am now going to divide both sides by, by n. It's another algebra trick right here, because we have a coefficient in front of our expression. And we just want to find out what is this one singular expression sine, I mean integral of sine to the n of x equal to. And so the, the only simple way of doing that, the only simple way of, of getting there, divide both sides away by that coefficient. Okay? And so at this point, Here's how we coming out down to that final result right here. So after dividing n from both sides, we're looking at sine to the n of x dx, and it's an integral. That integral will equal to see the first term here. The first term here becomes a uh, minus sine to the n minus one of x cosine of x, and I can write it as one fraction over it. And then on the other part, it's the same as n minus 1 over n times with the integral sine to the n minus 2 of x. I mean sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. Okay? And so what have we done here? What have we found? And all of a sudden, so we, we found that we have solved the integral. We did not solve completely in, in the sense that, that we went all the way down to finding the final antiderivative. But at least if we're looking closer, the problem in the beginning asked us to prove. So this line here, everything below this was our work. But the proving problem in the beginning was following. We want to prove that the integral of sine to the n of x dx, okay, the left-hand side, is to equal negative 1 over n times sine to the n minus 1 of x cosine of x. Okay, plus, and then there's an n minus 1 over n with the integral of sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. Okay, that's just a reminder. And, and as I said in the beginning earlier, the, you should have had that uh, written down right here. But now if we're looking at the, the current step that we have had, how close are we? I shouldn't even ask how close are we. We are right there. So this is where we, because now it just takes a simple algebra understanding. This divided by n here is the same as uh, minus 1 over n times uh, sine of n minus sine to the n minus 1 of x, cosine of x, okay, and then plus that n minus 1 over n multiplied with the integral sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. Okay, and so at this point right here, left hand side satisfactorily equals to the right hand side. And so we have formally concluded our proof. We made our way to prove that sine of to the, the integral of sine to the n of x dx equal to this. Well, it's unfinished, but at least we made it clear how to this left hand side equal to that right hand side. And so now once we, everything became clear to viewers, to, to the readers who read your proof paper, we're going to say this is the end of our proof. So this is a big heavy period right here, crazy big period indicating and uh, approve. It's the end of the proof. Okay. And so here we go. That's the proof. And uh, now let me erase all this work and, and just let me mention some more about this particular example. So essentially, this problem was an integral problem. And you've learned more experience in taking integration by parts. And so the first specialty I mentioned earlier was that when you were attempting this integral, when we were on our one, among one of, some of our early steps, 
then this integral admittedly was an integration by parts, but the Liate guideline did, guideline did not help too much. Okay, but at the end, once we have proven our result right here, well, negative one over n sine to the n minus one of x cosine of x, okay, plus n minus one over n times the integral sine to the n minus two of x dx. Now, if we are seeing this formula here as a, if we're seeing this formula here a little more closely, the special th thing about this is that, well, it's, uh, well, my, my, my another little purpose of bringing up this example is that I also want my students who learn from me to, to start get start getting comfortable with how you prove. Okay, but another way, another usefulness of this result you have just proven here is that mathematicians out there refer to this as a formula. It's the, it's called a reduction formula. Okay, for sine to the n of x. I mean specifically the, for integration. So when we're integration, when we're taking the indefinite integral for a high power of sine of x, see that sine to the n, then the, the look at the result, the first term here is already has, already has a, a reduced power including some cosine. And then the, the rem, even the remaining integral here, it's still repeating. We're not complete, I mean we, are, we did not complete the integral, but at least it, it reduced the integral to something with a lower power, okay? And so it became a formula that was quite useful. I mean, I'm not gonna point out as an example in this, right, in this video, but there will be time in your learning. Think about this. Think about if you are taking the sine to the fourth of x, okay? Then with this formula, that it can, can quickly help you bypass a lot of uh, work right here. You don't have to worry about integration by parts or anything like that, but how I see this, this is a high power of sine, okay? And so you can think of this as, uh, this is a minus one over, see, what's the n here? The n is the power, so minus one fourth, right? Sine to the, now the power here reduced. So to the third power of x times cosine of x, okay? So we have some template set up right here, some formula set up right here. And then add, we now produce the additional formula. So n minus one over n here is going to be three fourths. So this is a, just a quick application and you will have, when we actually get there to these kind of problems, then, then I will have more, the, I will be able to bring in more the usefulness of this. So here I'm just only gonna breathe through. So three fourths here and the integral that we have produced here is going to be the sine squared. Okay, so we're not, I'm not saying that we're done with the problem, but at least from a, a starting out with an integral of a high power, that first term is nothing to worry about now because it's, it's no, I mean, it's no integration here, but the, the real integration we have to handle next is an integration of a much reduced power of at least n minus two is here. And so think about it. You can apply the, this reduction formula again on that high power, treating that as a high power, and then you can apply that there as well. Okay, but again, that's just a brief idea. We will have other video lecture where I formally introduce how you can use this. Okay, and so this is another, uh, this is the, the specialty of this little formula right there, and, and particularly this example that I brought up. It, it gets you more comfortable and learn more experience with your integration by parts, and also now we've learned how to prove, and specifically, you, you've proven that uh, reduction formula for sine to the n of x. And I'm talking about uh, the reduction formula for integration, okay?